Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. How can Bitcoin be used as a worldwide payment if it's so volatile? If the price goes up 10% and then drops 15%, who would want to accept this as a worldwide payment? But the simple short answer is that it won't be used as a worldwide payment. And that's because at the time of making this video, May of 2020, the market cap or the size of Bitcoin is just too small. It's only $177 billion. And just to put that into perspective, while Bitcoin's at only $177 billion, we have companies such as Apple and Amazon that are near a trillion dollars. We have the gold market cap, which is almost at $8 trillion. If a market cap is small, it's similar to a light weight, a five pound weight, very easy to pick it up and move it. But if that weight or that market cap is 200 pounds, it's very difficult to move it. So this is the case, especially in first world countries. There's no need to use a currency like Bitcoin when you have a dollar, you, you know, a stable dollar, when you have banking, when you have all the services that you need. But I said it won't be used as a worldwide payment at the moment, but that doesn't mean that it's not being used as a payment already today. We see in countries that don't have the same privileges as first world countries that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is actually needed and it's actually used. We see in Venezuela that they have experienced the highest hyperinflation rate we have ever seen in the history of the world. So they don't have the option to use their currency of their country or use a credit card. They have to move into something like Bitcoin and that's exactly what they are doing in Venezuela. We can see that the Bitcoin acceptance skyrocketed in Venezuela amid their hyperinflation crisis. And this is the thing about hyperinflation versus volatility. With volatility in Bitcoin, it might drop down percent. It might go up 10%. It might drop down 20, go up 30. So it goes up and down. But over time, if you have been holding Bitcoin, eventually it gains value and you actually make money. But the difference with hyperinflation is that once a, val once a currency loses, loses its value, that's it. It lost its value. It's not going up. So we also saw in Argentina that they have experienced hyperinflation over 50%. It's not like it's going to go down 50% and then go up 80%. It's not coming back. So people in Argentina and Venezuela, they move into something like Bitcoin for daily payments. And that's how we also saw demand for Bitcoin surge in Argentina. And then more recently, we saw in Lebanon that there has been hyperinflation of their currency and it led to mass protests. And we also saw the Lebanese turning to Bitcoin during their time of economic crisis. So as you can see, first world countries, you might not need to use it. It's more of a store of value, a speculative asset. But in these countries, they need to use it as a daily payment. And that's what they're doing. And we also see that 1.7 billion people in the world are unbanked. So again, if we're sitting here in America or in Europe, we're saying who would want to use this volatile cryptocurrency when I can just, you know, send money through Venmo or through PayPal, I could send it from my bank to their bank and they'll have money. But not everyone has these services. As I mentioned, 1.7 billion people are not banked or unbanked in the world. A service like PayPal, right? You might use this often. You might send it. Maybe you live in America and you send it to someone in Canada. Or maybe you even live in America and you're just sending it from one state to another state. And you feel that this is easy, which it is. But not everyone has this access. Even PayPal is not is blocked or it doesn't work in certain countries such as Belarus, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Zimbabwe. So these people as well are the ones that would use Bitcoin as a daily payment even though it's volatile because they don't have another option. So you might be sitting here wondering, well if Bitcoin can be used as a worldwide payment at the moment, is there another cryptocurrency that can? And the answer is no. If we can see, as we can see, the market cap of Bitcoin is $177 billion. As I'm making this video in May of 2020, the next largest market cap is Ethereum at only $22 billion. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, because the market cap of Bitcoin is so small, it's going to be volatile until it reaches a trillions of dollars in market cap. How can we expect any other cryptocurrency to be used as a worldwide payment? So the answer at this time of making this video is that cryptocurrency is not used as a worldwide payment. For the most part, countries will still use their own fiat currency. So why would someone use 
Bitcoin? Why would someone use cryptocurrency? And this, this is even for a first world country, whether Bitcoin is volatile or whether it's not volatile. Why would someone want to use this if they can just use their own currency in their land, their stable currency? Well, the first reason is because everyone knows that Bitcoin is borderless. You can send it anywhere in the world and it's very simple for a very cheap fee. We saw that Bitfinex made a $1.1 billion Bitcoin transaction for only 68 cents, which does not exist in traditional finance. You'll never find the fee that low. So you might be sitting here and wondering, well, why would they send $1.1 billion worth of Bitcoin, right? That might have some volatility when they can just exchange it into the currency of the land and then send it that way. So this sounds good in theory, right? But when you think about it practically, it makes no sense and it's almost impossible because when you actually want to exchange your cryptocurrency for fiat, whether it's a billion dollars or whether it's $10,000, you have to send it to your exchange if it's not on there already, then you have to sell it, then you have to transfer it to your bank and that can take three days, that could take five days. Then it reaches your bank and your bank wonders, where did this money come from? Where did this $30,000 $30, come from? And they'll put a hold on, on your account. They'll look into it. It could be five days. It could be 10 days until they give you your money, if they give you your money. And if you ever did a bank transfer yourself in the past, you'll know that even sending maybe $10,000 is not instantly credited into your account. It takes some time. They put a hold on it, authorization hold. So just by using Bitcoin, even though it might have these volatile prices, you're avoiding this huge hassle of selling it and transferring it. That could take 15 days asking for permission. And in the end, you might not even get all of your money. And then on top of this fact, you might be wondering, okay, I get this, but the people, this is the thing, the people accepting Bitcoin, it's because they prefer to accept it. It's not like you're just making a payment in Bitcoin because that's what you want to pay in. The person that is receiving it wants it because they don't want cash. They want Bitcoin because they have a belief that the Bitcoin will gain value in the future. So again, this is another reason why someone would send a transaction in Bitcoin even though it's volatile at the moment. And another one is privacy. People want to spend their money privately and as we just spoke about with the bank transfer case, people don't want to have to ask permission from this party and that party how they could spend their money or when they can spend their money. They want to spend it how they, how they would like. And privacy doesn't always mean that you're doing it for an illegal purpose. But even if it is for an illegal purpose, we have to acknowledge the fact that the black market is worth over $1 trillion. And whether we like it or not, whether we think it's good or not, this is a market that people will use cryptocurrency on even though the cryptocurrency is volatile. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about on why someone would use Bitcoin for a transaction despite its volatility has to do with taxes. It depends where you live. In different countries, there are different tax rules. In some countries, once you sell your Bitcoin to fiat, you have to pay a tax. But if you take the Bitcoin directly and buy something with it without transferring it to fiat, you don't have to pay the tax. So as you can see, Bitcoin is not a worldwide payment and it probably won't be a worldwide payment for a long time. But depending where you live, depending what your circumstances are, it might need, you might need to use it as a daily payment method. I hope that you found value in this video. If you like this content, go down below, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.